Hello everyone, my name is Matt Radizak and I'm one of the NXCAD application engineers here at ProLem PLM. Today in this webinar we're going to be talking about the new simplified assembly command and the updates that have been made to the simplified assembly uh, wizard in the 1953 update and then the changes since. So our agenda for this short webinar is we're going to be talking about the simplify assembly command. Um, the command previously prior to 1953 was a wizard, which is a older UI that people who have been using NX for a long time might recognize. Um, they've since updated it to be more in line with the, the commands in the newer versions of NX to fit that kind of modern look. So we'll go through the dialog options in that new command, as well as some options inside of your assembly preferences, specifically the populate dialog on entry and what that setting can do um, and change within the command. After that, we'll move on to improvements that have been made to the command since release. So this is improvements both to the command itself as well as improvements to uh, things like simplified reference sets. We'll talk a little bit about that um, and changes that have been made since to kind of increase the quality of life with the command and the uh, way you can use it inside of an X. Now this slide is just to kind of have a list of the different options and um, changes that have been made since. Now, I'm not going to go through these one by one. I'll come back to this here in a second and go through them to kind of talk about and see if I missed anything that I wanted to talk about. Um, but I want to get more into the um, actual application and start going through the command itself inside of NX. So jumping over to NX, I just have a basic drill assembly here. Um, I'm just going to be using this as a as a easy representation of how you can use simplified assembly to kind of create a, a simplified or unintelligent version of the body, right? So now to get to your simplified assembly command is the same as it was prior to these changes. So you get a menu, assemblies, advanced, simplify assembly. Now this does require an advanced assembly license, um, same as before. Um, so once I go ahead and launch the command, it's going to take a second to load. And what it's going to go ahead and do is it's going to start building a preview for the simplified body. and the the uh, command itself actually infers some information about the assembly depending on how you are um, uh, depending on some of the settings that you can define within the the command. So, like I was talking about earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to create new part, and I'm going to hit update preview. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to open up another model in the in the split screen window of a simplify one dot prt. Now using this as an example as I just talk about the simplified part drop down options. So with the new command, you now have the ability to choose how you want the simplified body to be created. So before it would just be a body created in the top level assembly, right? You now have the ability to make a new part file that represents that simplified assembly. So I can create a new part file with those bodies. I can also use current part, which is the behavior you're probably familiar with from before, or I can select a part. So if I want to create a component within my my assembly that exists as the um, simplified component, um, I could do that as well. If that is something that you'd be you prefer as a workflow, right? So that's just an option that you have available to you. Now at the top of here, you have your it, you notice it automatically selected the bodies visible in the window. We'll get into how that setting works here in a minute, but. If I hit this infer values from assembly size, it's going to infer the values for all the dialogs within the command that have a, a numerical value. So for instance, if I set this value to four and I hit infer, it'll change it to 18. So it's inferring that value based on the size of the body that I'm using, right? So it's just doing that for me. Now, moving on down, we have ability the ability to um, simplify our body inclusion rules so we could choose how we want it to remove small bodies. So first off being small bodies. So anything that's too small that we don't want it to include in the simplified um, result, we can remove. Now, a lot of the bodies within this that are meet that small body criteria are internal. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that as is. Um, but I'll show you how this value can change um, the output when we look at the holes. So now, there's also some options in here for body exceptions. So I can tell it to uh, bodies I always want to include in the simplification. 
or bodies I always wanted to exclude. So for instance, if I come in and select this body here and hit Update Preview, you'll notice it's now hidden. Now I can also come into um, body simplification rules and pick specific faces that I want to exclude, right? So do I want, say for instance, one of these, sl these slots to be hidden? I can come through and pick the faces of the slot Go ahead and update preview. And you can see it gets rid of that slot from the, the simplified body. So I can go through and manually select things that I don't want to be shown um, in my simplified part, right? So that's where the manual portion of this comes in where you can go in and manually select those. Now I can also remove automatically remove holes by size. So for instance, I don't wanna go through and pick every single hole, right? So I can remove holes by size Go ahead and see, notice the value is automatically 18. If I go ahead and update preview, you'll notice it go through and remove a bunch of the holes from the uh, preview body for us. All right? There's also an option for moving blends by size. So if I wanted to remove all the blends from the model, depending on the size of them, I could do that as well. I'm not going to do that for this particular case, um, but that is an option as well. But if I were to say change this value from 18 to say four and then update, you'll notice that those holes that it just previously hid no longer meet the criteria for the simplification. So they're now being shown. So I can control that using that value. And this is, works the same way as the small bodies um, inclusion rule up top, up above. takes a second to update every time, but now with that, you'll notice the holes are gone again. I also have an option for removing internal voids. In this case, I have some openings within this body, so internal voids doesn't exactly matter too much um, in this case, but if I had a body that was shelled out and I wanted to remove the internals, the internal void from that, um, I could do so using that option. I also have the ability to come in and select faces to include rather than exclude. So things I want to include in the simplified body that might be excluded um, for whatever reason, I can bring those in. There's also an option at the bottom for unite bodies. So this is if you're, um, you want all the bodies that are created in the simplification process, if they're not quite touching, do you want them to be united into a single body at the end? So this is where that option comes in. There's also some settings down below for synchronized view. So do I want this window to synchronize the view as I'm making, rotating it, um, moving it around and so on. Um, the reason why this option exists to turn off is if you don't have a high end graphics card that can't handle like a two large assemblies being moved around at the same time, you might have some lagging issues. You can turn off the synchronized view to kind of help with that process. There's also some mass, mass properties options. Um, so if you want to store the mass properties from the top level into um, the, the simplified body, you can. It's just up to you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and confirm this. And you'll notice it go ahead, it'll go ahead and create a, the simplified.prt file. Now it's going to go through and remove all those holes, net the bodies afterwards, and create the feature group that exists within the new simplified part one part.prt file that acts as the simplified body for this assembly. Notice it gives us an error message, simplify assembly completed with the following warnings, hole removal problem, delete failed because the remaining faces cannot close the area left after deleting the selected faces. This is because of a particular hole in the assembly, most likely, that just doesn't close all the way when you do it, when it deletes the hole. Um, that's fine. In this case, we're not too worried about it. Um, in some cases, you might want to go find that hole, but in this particular case, we're not too worried about it. So with that, if I come over to my simplified part, you'll notice my assembly navigator has one component, right? If I go into my um, part navigator, I have a feature group named simplified with a body in it. If I go into applicate or assemblies, reference sets, you'll notice I have a simplified reference set containing that one body. So it automatically creates a simplified reference set for that body. 
Now, if you're someone who uses the simplified reference sets within your top level, right? So say, for instance, this was a component assembly or a subassembly, um, and I'm bringing this into a top level and I want that reference set to be used, I would then want to create my simplified assembly within this drill assembly.prt file, right? Because I don't have that simplified body inside my drill assembly, so it can't reference it. If I go into my reference sets, you'll notice in my simplified, I have nothing there, right? So if I want that simplified body to be made into that simplified reference set um, for that, that the actual subassembly that I'm using in my top level, I need to make sure that I'm doing it within the same part file, right? So it's just something to keep in mind. This also gives you the option of using the simplified part instead as well. But so you can make a simplified assembly using the simplified components, right? Instead of using the simplified bodies within reference sets within those components, it's just another option within NX because that's something we NX loves to do is to give you a, a thousand different ways to do the same thing, right? It's just depending on the workflow, what might work better for you in that particular case. Now, jumping back over to my slide deck, I'm just going to go through some of the options in here to make sure I didn't skip over anything. So we talked about being able to select bodies and components which are copied to a new part. So this is the, the first option where you pick the bodies that you want to move. We'll talk about an option that you can set here in a second for that. Um, exclude bodies smaller than a specified size, excluding your internal bodies, um, removing holes and blends below or smaller than a specified size, excluding those faces from the output body. So if I want to go in and pick, say, like for instance, those, that slot that I selected, you can pick those faces and remove those. Um, Excluding selected faces, or sorry, removing internal voids, so those internal voids within the drill, if we wanted to remove those, we could. Um, well, in this case with the drill, we couldn't because it has openings within it, so they're not technically internal voids. Um, there's opening that's lead to those to the space inside the part. So if, say, for instance, I had a shelled out block and I wanted to remove the void inside and make it a, a solid block, I could use that option to simplify it. You could also specify whether or not NX should attempt to unite the output bodies or if you want them all separate. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the populate dialog and entry within this section. So if I jump back over to NX, I go to File, Preferences, Assemblies, under Miscellaneous, there is a populate dialog and entry option. And basically what this does is it's kind of like a, um, a, a quick start to the simplified assembly command. So it'll automatically select everything visible in the current um, uh, bot at the current assembly um, when you first start the simplified assembly command. So if I don't want some things to be included in the simplification simplified body, I can just have that hidden to start. So I can kind of pre-build my assembly uh, for the simplified assembly command. So I don't have to go through and manually select the components I want to show up. So it's just a, a way of um, streamlining the process, right? This also automatically does the infer values option. Um, so it automatically bases it off the size and all that that for you. Um, it's more or less just a way to streamline that process. Now, some people don't like that. Some people like to kind of have the manual control. They don't want it to automatically grab everything. Like say, for instance, you have everything shown. You don't want everything in it, right? You don't want all that stuff to populate. Um, you can come in and turn this off. And this is a saved in the, in the file it's a preference setting, right? So it's saved within the template file. So if you want to change this, you can change it in your preferences. But um, you can come in and change it on the fly whenever you decide to do it. It's a nice, quick, and easy. It's only one little checkbox. So now moving on, I want to talk about the changes that have been made since release and the versions that they were implemented in. Now I've Included this separately because um, currently we're on 22.12. I could have just bundled this all together, but I included this separately in case you're on an older version so you can kind of understand why certain things might be missing. Um, so I wanted to kind of have this here to talk about. So body and face rules. So in those dialogues that I was showing where I could pick the face of the slot, for example, um, they added body and face rules to those so you have more control over it. Um, I just forgot to mention that option um, when I was going through it, but that was added in 1980. Simplified reference sets were added in 2206, and this is the ability for you to create those um, simplified, uh, the, the automatic creation of the simplified reference set uh, when doing the um, simplified assembly command. So it automatically creates that simplified reference set. 
Now, again, in 2212, this was changed a bit more in terms of the overall usage of a simplified reference set, more so than the, the simplified assembly command. So what they did was they made the simplified reference set um, similar to how the model and empty reference set work, where they kind of exist in every part file by default now. Um, and then the commands that use that simplified reference set automatically put them into that reference set. Now you can also go in and change the name of this. So if you don't want it called simplified, you can go into your customer defaults and change the default for that. So you can have it called simple or whatever you want to change it to. Um, so that was changed in 2212, but in 2206 was when it was enabled to have the automatic creation. Now in 22.6, the ability to um, control whether or not you wanted it to create in a new part, um, a existing part that you can select or the current part, that being the top level assembly or sub-assembly or whatever, um, that was when that option was implemented. Prior to that, simplified assembly command could only in create a new simplified assembly um, within a new part file. So that gave you a little bit more control about how you wanted to create it. This was also when they introduced the, the ability to synchronize the views so that when you rotate the model, it rotates with you. And all everything I just did was inside of 2212. It's worth mentioning as well. So that's just a brief overview of where those improvements were made. Um, so if you're in a different version, you can kind of have an idea of why it might be behaving differently for you. And that's it for today's webinar. So thank you all for attending. Um, again, my name is Matt Radizak. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be opening up the now for questions. But um, if you want to watch this video later on, um, feel free to check out our YouTube channel where this video and other videos related to NX are posted. And have a good rest of your day.